Good morning. It's Tuesday, March 17th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Following the Truth, and our scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. The Apostle Paul writes, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them, and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground. In the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. All of them ate the same spiritual food, and all of them drank the same spiritual water. For they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, and that rock was Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, and their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. These things happened as a warning to us, so that we would not crave evil things as they did, or worship idols as some of them did. As the scriptures say, the people celebrated with feasting and drinking, and they indulged in pagan revelry. And we must not engage in sexual immorality as some of them did, causing 23,000 of them to die in one day. Nor should we put Christ to the test as some of them did and then died from snake bites. And don't grumble as some of them did and then were destroyed by the angel of death. These things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. Jesus said, the truth will set you free. This week, I watched yet another broadcast warning about the dangers of the coronavirus, and the epidemiologist being interviewed was asked what one thing government could do to help stem the spread of this disease. His answer was that our government must be totally transparent with the truth. Perhaps the scientist was quoting Jesus. Movements like the Israelites following Moses out of Egypt are faith-based. They can come unglued in a hurry. Just ask any presidential candidate who never won the election. But what about those which appear to be successful? What about the elections won? What then? I seem to recall President Bill Clinton, after his election, uttering that storied phrase, Oh my gosh, I'm president. What do I do now? Well, I'm sure he wasn't the first president who sensed he was in way over his head. On a personal note, I too had that sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach when I was chosen to serve in my first pastorate. Mine was something like, oh man, what are these people thinking? Do they really think I'm Moses? What are they going to do when they find out I'm just like them, trying to find God's will and serve, but clueless to the next step? The truth, as transparent as it comes, that's what it's like for God's people who want to be obediently walking by faith. To follow the truth, you step out on a lot of thin air, not knowing, but believing that air is inhabited by God's Spirit, and it will hold you up. The Apostle Paul warned the Corinthian believers to remember Moses and the commands of God and how the early followers of Yahweh messed it up with distractions like sexual perversity and cultural cravings. There are a lot of bodies strewn all over the desert wilderness because of wavering faith and wanton disobedience. What is most important in truth following comes down to a settledness without stubbornness. That means if you want to follow Jesus, the embodiment of truth and righteousness, you have to choose like Joshua did, who said, As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. But there cannot be a stubborn cantankerousness about it all. God's Spirit won't hang with immovable, unfeeling, hardened hearts. There are enough of those to go around these days. God wants willing, open, and vulnerable hearts. For you today, Paul wrote that the mistakes of the early followers were written down for the benefit of current followers. What's the next generation going to say about you? Eat you on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.